There's something so cool about discovering secret rooms in a video game. Rooms that aren't advertised, but are there waiting to be found. One game that received plenty of criticism for its storyline is Bone Lab, but there's so much more to it than meets the eye. After completing the game, I embarked on a quest to find every keycard and hidden room, aided by the incredible Bone Lab community and my amazing Discord server. These secret rooms are like small, intriguing puzzles, each with its own story waiting to be uncovered. And what I discovered was beyond my wildest imagination. Strange happenings within the operating system and a developer with a mysterious agenda. So grab some popcorn and buckle up for a journey through every secret room in Bone Lab. You never know what secrets we might uncover along the way. It all starts here with Bone Lab's first level, Descent. I'm walking through the caves I've been through many times before. Then, I finally stumble upon a keycard belonging to Andy T, the senior engineer for Bone Lab. It was hidden on top of a locker and it feels like a crucial piece of the puzzle. Close by, I find the trash handler's note, which adds to the mystery, revealing their dissatisfaction with cleaning up the fantasy staff, and joke about using lava to cleanse it all. It makes me question what kind of world Mythos really is creating. Determined to uncover the truth, I climb up this pipe and through a tight corridor. I scan Andy's card and find myself in a secret room filled with watermelon boxes and a computer on top of a box. A notepad on the desk reveals that the Boneworks team plans to use console demands to ship medieval recycling to various groups without anyone noticing. The yellow bars seem to be some kind of storage bay. There's also this pipe with a valve. There's also a door at the back that seems to lead nowhere. There's a second secret room, but this one requires a key. I find the key and then put it into the keyhole. It's called the maintenance room and it contains a massive calculation device and bridge over a heating device. This appears to be for the level's lava supply to come through. As I stand there, taking in the sight before me, I realize there's much more to this simulation than meets the eye, but a world with its own secrets, motivations, and dangers. And I'm determined to uncover them all. As I entered the Bone Lab Hub, I just went straight for the key cards. I navigated through the airlock and made my way through the level, encountering different obstacles like climbing a ladder and passing through a giant turbine. I finally found a construction elevator that took me to a vast pool-like area that had a building with an office in the middle. It was here that I found the first keycard belonging to Jeremy C, the Bone Lab lead engineer. I continued my search, which led me through this door, and at the very end of the corridor, hidden behind some boxes, I found the keycard belonging to Alex K, the Bone Lab creative director. It was while exploring the office that I came across a clipboard with interesting insights into the team's perspective on Monaghan's decision to work Fantasyland away from the medieval theme. With the two keycards in my possession, I made my way back to the start. Just under the elevator, I found a keycard and door. I put in Jeremy's keycard and the door unlocked. It gave this scary atmosphere off, as dark red rooms do. Inside the room, I found a notepad detailing the team's concerns about security on the cure board and Monosex investigation into the disappearance of their office in District 06. It appears that someone named Risky had signed the message, which made me wonder who they were and what their role was in all of this. As I proceeded further into the room, I encountered an enemy crablet that I had to defeat. The room had huge support beams holding up a concrete roof with an eerie sound that gave me goosebumps. I found another clipboard on top of a barrel that discussed the Boneworks team clearing out old projects and culling some experimental work that accumulated in a lot of odd stuff. They were planning to quarantine this stuff, but they were unsure about how the teams would want to assemble things. The clipboard also has data on Sabre Lake security uses. As I continued my search, I found a door that seemed to be upside down, violently shaking and blocking something or leading to another dimension. I couldn't open it, but I found a notepad nearby that revealed a team member's plan to leave and seal a pathway to the lab to prevent it from being compromised. There were other secure and less secure ways to access a lab and a member's location information could be found in a specific location. I tried no clipping through the door but there was nothing to be found. After leaving the room, I made my way back towards the Bone Lab Hub. Once there, I noticed a vent which I promptly broke off and walked through. The vent led me to a wall with a chalk drawing of a door and the words, not this way, scrawled on it. I inserted a keycard and suddenly found myself able to noclip through the door. The corridor beyond had a hole in the floor which I bravely jumped into, finding myself in another corridor. I then entered a device which looked like a spring and pushed me back up the hole but instead I pressed on and jumped over a ledge eventually arriving in a room with a heavy calculation machine. The constant hum of machines filled the air. The room contained a desk, a computer and a poster on the wall that appeared to be a reference to the novel 1984. There are three clipboards separated into different parts. The first section greets lab members while informing 
Monagon, Saber Lake and Gammon security agents that the following text is redacted. It explains that the room does not exist in the same space as a lab and is located within MythOS, with spaces connected through various ways. The second mentions they have discovered a hidden room located deep within District 5. The team has found that Monogon security posters effectively deter scrutiny from Monosec as they concentrate on areas of MythOS that are not closely monitored. The posters do not provide enough data to alert Monosec about the team's activities. The third section states that the room is accessible to the lab only if you don't have Monosec credentials, which allows for convenient movement between the lab and MythOS. There's a note that includes reference to a work machine, which is a clone of the Mimic machine from the old office. It mentions that no information of value can be found on the computer and to see what's being worked on. One would have to find the author at Redacted in the future. The whiteboard in the room lists various headings under High Physics Experiments Hub projects such as void doors and radio frequencies, pizzas and MOPSs. It mentions that there is a secret tunnel that leads from the lab to the room we are currently in. The room is referred to as a space that can fold, which enables transportation to District OS. Additionally, there is a clock in District OS displaying the time of 3.14. 3.14 is a common time in Boneworks. You'll notice it in the Boneworks level central station on the clock tower. It's also coincidentally the number for pi. I found this button on the wall but I couldn't really work out what it does. I then left the room and headed towards the next level. In the long run level, I faced off against projectors, holographic enemies that resemble physical balls and shot at me with virtual guns. Defeating them one by one, I progressed through the level, aided by the Nimbus gun that helped me bypass many obstacles. Eventually I arrived at the corridor with an expansive roof, its walls cleverly disguised as TV screens to mimic the sky. After dispatching more projectiles, my perseverance paid off when I discovered a key card. It belongs to Eric C, a junior graphics engineer working on the Bone Lab project. I stumbled upon a keycard port and inserted the keycard. To my surprise, this action opened a secret door in the sky. Intrigue, I ventured through the door, finding myself in an industrial looking space with a massive hole. At its center stood a peculiar device, a circular tube filled with glowing purple glue that radiated enough light to illuminate the entire room. Strangely, the goo seemed weightless, defying gravity. Additionally, the room was also adorned with rugs, adding an unexpected touch of comfort. Within this mysterious chamber, I discovered a notepad left behind by the Boneworks team. The first note from their secure board. It discussed the inefficiency of trash recycling in the virtual realm. It questions the need for a when the virtual void offered infinite storage without the requirement for compression. The note speculated that these measures might be remnants of outdated operating systems or mere inefficiencies of concept. Another notepad provided an intriguing insight into the field of climate science. The note revealed that a theory suggesting that the rapid development of immersive technology was driven by alarming data from the 1970s, predicting a significant rise in the sea level in the mid-21st century. Top scientists aware that persuading people to address the imploding environmental crisis would be challenging, leading them to allegedly create an addictive simulation to captivate individuals and divert their attention away from the imminent catastrophe. The goal was to keep the people indoors, minimizing resources and consumption. While uncertain of its validity, the note acknowledges that the concept as an interesting one to consider. Leaving the enigmatic chamber behind, I continued my virtual journey, eagerly venturing towards the next mission that awaited me, prepared to face new challenges and uncover further secrets. In the depths of the dark and gloomy mind dive level, I ventured towards a shed, uncovering the key card of none other than the renowned project composer Michael W, also known as Wright, who had composed the mesmerizing soundtrack for the game. Little did I know that this keycard held the key to an even more fascinating revelation. Nearby, a door beckoned me with its enigmatic label, The Wishing Well. Intrigued, I stepped through, only to find myself immersed in a simulation corridor. Its grids-like structure captivated my senses. As I delved deeper, a mysterious wishing well materialized before me. To explain this wishing well, I have to go back in time a bit. Michael made a post on Discord offering to incorporate players' wishes into the game's soundtrack. Eagerly, I reached out to him, realizing that I'd become part of the very fabric of this virtual realm. Which is why, when you go to the well, you can hear members of the Boneworks community making wishes. It's pretty cool. I wish the world wasn't so unjust. I wish Cures for them. You must not let them down. I wish I could be in video games. I wish I could be in video games. I wish for my voice to be heard.
I truly wish for all the heart that things were better. My curiosity led me to a hidden nook where a keycard reader laid concealed. Inserting the keycard activated the reader, unlocking a room adorned with mesmerizing lights cascading upon an arch, and a central platform beckoning me to stand amidst their brilliance. A truly awe-inspiring experience. And there, amidst the captivating glow, I discovered a notepad, a gateway to profound knowledge and mysteries yet to be unraveled. Its pages unveiled a startling revelation. The author had stumbled upon what they believed to be the heart of the plate's energy system. They marveled at its response to rhythm and music, hinting at the influence these elements held over its growth and trajectory. Driven by the thirst for understanding, the authors recognized the need for further experiments, but couldn't shake the disconcerting feeling that something dangerous, akin to radiation seeping through reality, lingered within this discovery. It also makes a really cool set. Although captivated by these findings, I pressed on, exploring the depths of the level. A forgotten amusement park ride, fashioned as a minecart came into view, tempting me with its allure. Yet I chose a different path, scaling a pole to uncover yet another key card. This one belongs to Spencer S, a technical engineer from the Bone Lab development team, whose gamer name was the intriguing Pro MacGyver. MacGyver is a fictional character known for his resourcefulness and ability to solve complex problems using everyday objects. Venturing further, I stumbled upon a hidden alcove concealed behind a rock, concealing a mysterious keycard enterer. Activating it revealed a corridor leading to a surveillance room overlooking the ride's line. Inside, an array of computers hummed with unseen energy. Amongst the captivating equipment, a clipboard beckoned me, holding within it a revelation of epic proportions. The clipboard's words unveiled the Boneworks team's astonishing discovery. The foundation plates were taking root, birthing an entirely new world, unfettered by the approvals of MythOS, Monogon, or the security team. The raw concept, interwined with an extraordinary void energy, transformed the environment. From the depths of a garbage pile, a great place descended, exuding transformative energy that dissolved and reshaped everything it touched. Metallic spheres sprouted forth, molding the physical aspects of this ever-evolving realm. Out of sheer randomness, a new world emerged, captivating its bewildering beauty. The team's dedication to documenting this mesmerizing process remained unwavering, fueled by their undying dream of banana land. Stepping beyond the room's confines, it dissolves into oblivion. The camera peering into the mind dive ride, a mere illusion. I departed from the room, eager to embark on my next mission, filled with wonder and anticipation for the enigmatic wonders that await within this ever-shifting tapestry of Bone Lab. As I ventured deeper into the mysterious world of Big Anomaly, my curiosity grew, driving me to explore every nook and cranny. I'm with my no-clip abilities, I embarked on a quest to uncover the secrets hidden within this enigmatic place. My first breakthrough came when I stumbled upon Andrew's keycard, belonging to none other than the esteemed writer for Bone Lab, Alan A. This initial find set the stage for what could become a riveting journey into the unknown. Guided by a sense of adventure, I sold through the air, searching for more keycards. Eventually, my pursuit led me to a foreboding corridor, its sterile white walls giving off an eerie, lab-like vibe. Intrigued, I cautiously made my way inside, revealing a clandestine laboratory adorned with solitary test benches. Within this secretive space, my eyes fall upon a notepad that held the potential to unravel the mysteries of Sable Lake's enigmatic experiments. The text before me hinted at the existence of an internal assassination group and the need for utmost security surrounding the research. It became clear that the revelations housed within this lab were to be guarded with the utmost caution, their very existence shrouded in the veil of obscurity. My next discovery awaited me in the form of four identical notes pads, each posing critical questions regarding the experiments conducted within this realm. The Bone Lab team's Secure Board version 1.4 sought to assess the ethical implications of their innovative trials. These inquiries delved into the realm of simulated entities, their perceived sentience, the presence of pain, and the emotional toll imposed by the experimental results. The very essence of reality blurred as the note suggested that I might be experiencing involuntary suspension of disbelief, urging a swift return to a conceptual isolation chamber. Intriguingly, a nearby whiteboard bore the markings of cryptic study, hinting at Sableck's involvement and in the existence of anomalous objects. These cryptids, similar in appearance to the enigmatic anomalies, seem to adhere to universal rules while serving as a manifestations of abstract concepts. As my eyes scanned the whiteboard, more mysteries unfolded, hinting at the disposal recommendations, testing mythologies, and anomalies manipulation of, of gravity and collisions. The tantalizing enigma surrounding the cryptids and their unknown motives and manifestations beckoned for further exploration. Determined to delve deeper into this labyrinth world, I pressed forward in search of the next keycard. 
fortune favoured my resolve, leading me to Kelsey G, the creative director of Bone Lab, also known by the name Nono. With this newfound keycard, my journey surged onward. Each step propelled me closer to the truth. The path took an unexpected turn as I stumbled upon a keycard reader which granted me access to a seemingly insuspicious bathroom. To my surprise, the notepad within mirrored the content of the lab room. Once again, the experimental testing ethical assessment presented a series of thought-provoking questions, challenging the relevance of the experiments in non-virtual settings and pondering the simulated entity's state of being. As doubts creep in my mind, I was reminded what unfolded before me was a virtual reality, urging a return to the safety of the conceptual isolation chamber. However, the intrigue didn't end there. Behind a hidden button lay a secret toilet, its walls adorned with cryptic messages. Curiosity peaked, I absorbed the enigmatic words scrawled across the wall. Questions regarding the purpose of the secret bathroom, the loneliness of its occupant, and the incessant relocation of the research team. I then made my way to Straight Punch. My senses were instantly captivated by the breathtaking ambience. It was like stepping into a cyberpunk paradise, surrounded by a dazzling display of vibrant colors and pulsating energy. My objective in this level was to navigate through the futuristic bar, embracing the underground vibes, and ultimately eliminate the relentless security guards patrolling the streets. It was a task that required strategy, precision, and a touch of raw power. As I roamed the dimly lit alleys, my heart pounded with excitement, knowing that each successful takedown would propel me closer to the next stage. Time passed as I tirelessly scored every corner, searching for the elusive Jonathan L. Keycard. He was not just any ordinary individual, but also a renowned musician for Bone Lab, known by his stage name, Radio Bud. Rumors whispered of his connection to the inner workings of this level, and finding him was crucial to my progression. Finally, in a secluded section of the roof, hidden away from prying eyes, I stumbled upon a device for keycard entry. As I swiped Jonathan L.'s keycard, a secret door materialized before me, beckoning me into the unknown. With a surge of anticipation, I stepped through the door, leaving the neon lit world behind. The transition was stark as I entered the narrow corridor adorned with rugs strewn across the floor. Moonlight filtered through the crackled skylight, casting ethereal patterns on the worn concrete. My gaze fell upon a peculiar room bathed with the glow of a television perched on a stack of cement blocks. Surrounding the TV were mismatched chairs, remnants of a gathering long past, and a trace of stale beer lingered in the air. Curiosity compelled me to investigate further, and my eyes fell upon a weathered notepad, resting on a makeshift table. Intrigued, I picked it up, scanning its contents as if deciphering secrets from a forgotten era. The notepad seemed to be a glimpse into the workings of the simulation, a portal into the minds of its creators. As I delved into the scrawled words, the line sparked my imagination, fueling my determination. The author spoke of an authoritarian nightmare, hinting at a deeper purpose to the virtual world I found myself trapped within. The notepad described the satisfaction of combating fascism, an exhilarating sensation achieved by welding a guitar as a weapon. I couldn't help but imagine the legendary art the Ford, the very man who birthed this simulation, venturing through these same streets with a fire in his eyes, leaving a trail of punched faces in his wake. The excitement welled within me as the words of the notepad promised a thrilling future, a tantalizing taste of what was yet to come. The invitation to rock resonated deep within my being, igniting a flame of determination that burned brighter than ever before. Within the notepad clutched tightly in my hand, I forged ahead, ready to embrace the challenges that lay in wait. The neon lights of level 6 beckoned me once again, and armed with the knowledge of the past, I would pave my way through this cyberpunk labyrinth inching closer to the truth about the oppression that was really going on in Myth OS. Revisiting Moonbase wasn't exactly my favorite prospect. Nightmares have plagued my sleep reminded me of the challenges that I had on this map, but the keycard I needed was perched on top of a towering pillar. So there was no other choice but to go back to this map. As I ascended using my Nimbus gun, I retrieved the keycard which belonged to Cameron M, also known as Cam Obi wan the community manager for Bone Lab. With the keycard in hand, I made my way back to the mission starting point. A door stood before me, leading to a secret tower. The ascent was a series of parkour challenges reminiscent of a platformer game. Thanks to the low gravity on Moon, jumping to the incredible heights was a breeze. I effortlessly maneuvered through the obstacles, making my way to the pinnacle. At the top, a notepad caught my attention. It revealed the secrets of Moon-based construction. The intriguing hypothesis of using low gravity chamber as a cryptid piqued my curiosity. The notepad hinted at the possibility of simulating or synthesizing these mysterious creatures, though the lack of actual cryptids for testing posed a challenge. Additionally, the construction process for Moonbase required streamlining for greater efficiency, as there were numerous low gravity experiments yet to be conducted. Leaving the Moon Moonbase mission behind, I couldn't help but notice the substantial improvements the developers have made since my initial playthrough. There's a much bigger sense of satisfaction. That said, those old memories of Moonbase still linger. The progress made and the mysteries unraveled propelled me forward to the next mission. Pillar Climb beckoned me with its vertical challenge, and I descended to tackle it at a leisurely pace. Utilizing the Nimbus gun, I effortlessly ascended to the top of the towering pillar. There, I stumbled upon a keycard belonging to Paul O, the AI engineer for Bone Lab, who was also known as Bar. The path to the keycard reader was 
riddled with minor obstacles, enemy projectiles, pesky butterfly-like creatures that attempted to hinder my progress. Admittedly, this level wasn't among my favorites, but I approached it with a relaxed mindset, knowing that patience would be my greatest ally. With the keycard in my hand, I put it into the reader, triggering the unlocking of a door. I proceeded through the door, strolling through a dimly lit corridor until I reached the set of jail bars. Behind those bars lay a notepad and a button enticing me with their hidden secrets. I reached through the bars, retrieving the notepad. Its message seemed to be mysterious, evoking a sense of confinement and uncertainty. The rattling of bones clanging on the iron bars and the fading of hope painted a picture of an enigmatic journey through this level. Intrigued by the button, and to my relief, another door swung open, revealing a pathway to freedom. I stepped through, grateful for the respite from the oppressive atmosphere. The subsequent chambers welcomed me with yet another notepad. Its contents described a brief experimental game, offering a delightful diversion amidst the challenges of the level. The objective was simple, pull and push objects, skillfully climbing towards the top. The reward? A small hatch opening, surprising me with the playful antics of a mischievous crablet. A smile crept across my face as I marveled at the ingenuity and variety infused into the game. Pillar Climb might have tested my determination, but the intermittent moments of surprise and intrigue provided a welcome breather. Leaving level 11 behind, I carried a sense of accomplishment and relaxed demeanor. The virtual world stretched out before me, promising new adventures and discoveries. With a calm resolve, I ventured forth, eager to explore the next chapter of this captivating virtual odyssey. A sense stretched out before me, a daunting mission that seemed to go on forever. Amidst the darkness, I stumbled upon the first dev card, concealed within the mesmerizing vaporwave area. The ethereal purple lights cast a captivating glow, adding to the mystique of the surroundings. The dev card belongs to High Dean Abe, also known as VG Bandit, the enigmatic bone lab administrator. Despite the beauty of the area, enemies lurked around every corner, making progress through the level a treacherous journey. Undeterred, I pressed on, determined to uncover the secrets that awaited. After navigating through the hostile environment, I finally discovered the card port within an office space. A rogue projector sought to impede my path but I managed to insert a card, unlocking the peculiar room filled with boxes. Within this chamber, I came across two intriguing notepads, offering a glimpse into the inner workings of Bone Lab. The first notepad, labeled Station Stop Shops, hinted at the significance of Monogon's virtual delivery system. It outlined the success of allowing employees to utilize Monogon work credits to purchase items while at work, ensuring a timely delivery by the end of their workday. The seamless integration of work and personal preferences had proven beneficial, ultimately benefiting Monogon's working families. The second notepad, titled Expanding Beyond Fantasyland, revealed plans for Bone Lab to move its shops to a different simulation. The relocation involved disbanding the Fantasyland cast members and expanding the corner shop operation across multiple instances. Speculations arose regarding the financial decline of the medieval themed experiences and the allure of new worlds currently under development. Eager to unravel more mysteries, I continued my search, eventually stumbling upon the key card belonging to our man Brandon L, also known as Brandon Jale, the director of Bone Lab. However, the discovery was marred by ominous writings on the wall, seemingly scrawled in blood. The chilling message spoke of a chosen law for peace, the rejection of modifications, and the quest for contentment beyond the walled gardens. With Brandon's keycard in hand, I ventured further, soaring through the virtual realm in search for the keycard's entry point. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, I found it. Inserting Brandon's card, a door swung open, granting access to a colossal, dimly lit room. Its vastness seemed to hold secrets within its darkness, with doors lining each side awaiting the arrival of a train. As I entered the room, a notepad caught my eye, titled Extending Entities. It emphasizes the need to enchant the abilities of all entities to achieve real progress. Mere cosmetic changes from medieval fantasy to other realms would be insufficient without improving the fundamental stability of the virtual experience. Time emerged as a crucial factor, as the office simulated research highlighted the ongoing efforts to perfect the bodily foundations. Adjacent to the notepad, another piece of information beckoned. The ballot test alluded to a singular simulated pipe submerged in a pool of colliding spheres. This ultimate test aimed to unlock the secrets of perfecting an immersive experience. It pondered whether the joy of indulging in ultra immersion and frolicking through the city like lunatics could rival the pursuit of flawless simulation. Armed with these intriguing insights, I forged ahead. The allure of uncovering the secrets within level 13 ascent intensifying. The enigmatic virtual world of Bone Lab continued to unravel, captivating me with its layers of mystery and intrigue. Bowling welcomed me into its vibrant ambience as I stepped foot into the bowling alley. My eyes quickly spotted a dev card perched atop of the bowling sign, waiting to be discovered. It belonged to Kevin S., the talented sound designer for Bone Lab, known by the name Senzaki. Navigating through the alley, I eventually reached the end, where the card reader awaited. Without hesitation, I inserted Kevin's dev card, triggering the opening of a mysterious portal that descended into the depths below. With a leap of faith, I plunged into the abyss, finding myself in a secret room that sent shivers down my spine. The darkness enveloped me, accompanied by an eerie void-like sound and echoing throughout the empty space. It felt as though I had stumbled upon an abandoned swimming area devoid of life, yet filled with lurking. Navigating cautiously, I discovered enemies skulking in the shadows, adding a layer of tension to the already chilling environment. But amidst the desolation, a lone couch stood in the center bearing a notepad that seemed out of place. 
The notepad titled Pools contained a cryptic musings about the interconnectedness of the virtual system. Drawing comparisons to neural pathways or water spreading across concrete grooves before evaporating under the summer sun, it hinted at the uncanny sentience lurking within these artificially spawned worlds, a sensation that surpassed anything previously experienced in the realm of gaming. Driven by curiosity, I attempted to illuminate the area, hoping to reveal hidden secrets lurking within the darkness. My footsteps echoed as I traversed the empty expanse, searching for any clue or tangible discovery. Alas, my efforts were in vain, as the illuminated surroundings failed to reveal any additional surprises. Disappointing but undeterred, I continued my exploration knowing that sometimes the most profound mysteries lay concealed in the unlit corners of the virtual realm. This level really reminded me a lot of the Bone Lab Hub pool area. Disappointed but undeterred, I continued my exploration, knowing that sometimes the most profound mysteries lay concealed in the unlit corners of the virtual realm. With each step, the enigmatic nature of the bowling level grew more tantalizing, urging me onward in my quest to unravel its secrets. However, I couldn't find anything. Eager for the next challenge, I entered the treacherous domain of Drop Hit, prepared to face off against the formidable Null Bodies. As I delved deeper into the mission, a stroke of luck graced me as I stumbled upon the keycard belonging to Chris, the talented level designer for Bone Lab, known by the name Happy Go Crazy in the gaming world. Pressing forward, I traversed through the vibrant and colourful surroundings, captivated by the visual spectacle surrounding me. Ascending a ladder, I reached a pivotal point where I inserted Chris's dev card, unlocking a central door within the wall. Stepping through, I encountered a room teeming with adversaries, security guard enemies determined to impede my progress. With swift precision, I dispatched of them, clearing my path ahead. As I surveyed the room, a somber atmosphere hung heavy in the air, casting a sense of cold desolation. It became evident that these security guards had been confined within these walls for an extended period, their presence contributing to the room's melancholy ambience. Amidst this grim environment, I chanced upon a series of clipboards that held valuable information. One particular clipboard titled Punch Party revealed intriguing musings from Chris. It hinted at a plan to start a fight club, capitalizing on the exhilarating power of punches within the virtual realm. As I read through the notes, a sense of excitement and camaraderie emanated from Chris's words, emphasizing the thrill and enjoyment that this virtual arena offered. Immersed in the chilling room, I couldn't help but wonder what the lies of these trapped security guards and the potential stories hidden within these walls. Their prolonged confinement invoked a mix of sympathy and curiosity, urging me to continue exploring this mysterious realm and uncover the truths that lay concealed within. With each passing chapter, the world of Bone Lab grew more intriguing and enigmatic, beckoning me deeper into its virtual depth. As I prepared to venture forth from the drop hit level, the lingering presence of the security guard served as a reminder that within these virtual realms there are untold stories waiting to be unraveled. Entering container yard, an intriguing zombie warehouse map unfolded before me. I saw towards the end of the level and a sense of anticipation swelled within me. There, perched on the pinnacle of the journey, awaited the keycard of Cameron B, the esteemed gameplay engineer of Bone Lab, known in the gaming realm as Smasher. His influence over the original zombie warehouse mode in Boneworks was legendary. With the keycard in hand, I swiftly made my way to the designated secret room, a two-story warehouse concealed just around the corner. The room exuded an air of mystery, beckoning me to explore its hidden depths. On the first floor, a notepad caught my attention. Its heading, Shipping Handoff Automated Response, hinted at the integral role shipping operations played within the container yard. The notepad signed by Shipping Systems conveyed a sense of absence, suggesting that its author was temporarily away from the office. Yet, assurance of its uninterrupted shipping operations resonated throughout the message, attributed to the unwavering dedication of the Nulls. Peace and beans, a peculiar sign-off left me wondering with the enigmatic world within the container yard. Ascending the second level, another notepad awaited my discovery. Its title rugs hinted an unexpected diversion from the gaming world. It was a message addressed to someone named Steve, penned by Cameron B himself. The words revealed a surprising venture, Cameron's plan to establish a hemp rug business on a farmland he had acquired. Nulls, the unwavering workers of the virtual realm, were in mark to ensure the smooth operation of an automated shipping system. A sense of caution tempered my curiosity, wondering what unforeseen challenges might arise from such an ambitious undertaking. On the second level, I also encountered the Reclaimer B from Boneworks, a relic of past endeavors. It served as a reminder of the intricate mechanics and systems that once shaped the game, allowing players to save items from the inventory, guns at a culmination of each level. The presence of the Reclaimer bin invoked a nostalgia, reflecting upon the evolution of the progress achieved by the creators of Bone Lab. Immersed within the container yard's enigmatic atmosphere, I marveled at the multifaceted nature of this virtual realm. From the unassuming hemp run business plans to the interplay of automated shipping systems, the intricate tapestry of Bone Lab continued to unfold before my eyes. Curiosity ignited within me 
me, urging me to delve further into the mysteries that awaited the subsequent chapters. Venturing further into the virtual world, I found myself immersed in the treacherous and trap-ridden level of Dungeon Warrior. The Nimbus Gun proved to be a valuable tool, aiding me navigating the intricate web of hazards that awaited. Amidst my exploration, Fortitude smiled upon me. I discovered a developer keycard atop of a lefty ledge. It belonged to Cliff L, the esteemed editor and level designer for Bone Lab who assumed the gamer name C. Lorette. Pressing forward, I sawed through the level, descending to the various depths of a concrete abyss. It was there, at the bottom of the chasm, that the door beckoned, yearning for the touch of a keycard. As I inserted Cliff's keycard, the door swung open, revealing a hidden surveillance room. Within its confines, I stumbled upon an intriguing notepad, which held the secrets of the Bone Lab team. The notepad, titled Muscle Memories, spoke of a warrior course designed to hone one's physical prowess and develop muscle memory. It piqued my interest to learn that the Saber Lakes, a prominent entity within the game, had an employee obstacle course for their location security. The author, CL, contemplating the idea of incorporating a similar security gauntlets in future endeavors, drawing inspiration from medieval methods of safeguarding castles with moats and spike traps. It was a glimpse into the minds of the developers and their boundless creativity. Within the surveillance room, an array of cameras dotted the walls, their purpose to monitor and track the activities transpiring through the virtual landscape. The realization of being under constant surveillance lent an eerie and unsettling aura to the environment. As I continued my exploration, a whiteboard caught my attention, revealing a list of operations and plans. The list etched upon the whiteboard offered tantalizing insights into the game's development process. Roof traps, lava flow checks, aviation mechanics, climbing grips, launches, and other entries hinted at the intricate systems and mechanics woven into the fabric of the game. The mention of a fallen individual on a perilous wall raised questions and sparked curiosity. It was a stark reminder that even in the realm of virtual dangers lurked and mistakes could prove fatal. The whiteboard also unveiled a glimpse into the potential game features that never materialized, a climbing tower course, a downhill run, and other untaken paths. It offered a captivating view into the developer's brainstorming sessions, showcasing their creative ideas and the evolution of Bone Lab as it took shape. As I absorbed these discoveries, I marveled at the intricacy of the virtual world and the, and the passion driving its creators. The secrets revealed in Dungeon Warrior only deepened my fascination, leaving me eager to unravel further mysteries as my journey through Bone Lab continued. Embarking on Halfway Park, I found myself drawn towards the building on my left as I spawned into the level. To my delight, a keycard awaited discovery upon the desk. It belonged to Steve H, renowned in the gaming realm as Grey Scotsman, a true pioneer of Boneworks modding. His exceptional skills and contributions led him to secure a position as a tools engineer for Bone Lab. Navigating the map with purpose, I traversed diagonally until I stumbled upon the keycard scanner. The door swung open, unveiling a realm of mysteries awaiting my exploration. Descending a flight of stairs, I encountered a clipboard and eagerly pursued its contents. Titled Stress Relief, the author, Grey Scotsman, confessed an unusual method of finding solace amidst the trials of game development. Ubiquitous machines of creation had been rendered replicable for the sole purpose of smashing them. Steve H, with each passing day, took solace in the act of obliterating a printer during his lunch break and every opportunity that presented itself. The therapeutic benefits derived from the unconventional stress relief technique were extolled. In a mischievous nod to his colleagues, Chris, Steve proposed that perhaps spending less time at the MOTD message of the day would unveil therapeutic merits of printer smashing. Grey Scotsman's unique approach to stress relief left an inedible impression. Enthralled by the notion, I found myself surrounded by a stack of printers, beckoning me to partake in the joy of their destruction. With every strike, stress seemed to dissipate, replaced with a sense of exhilaration. Amongst the chaos of shattered printers, a fan vent and a hatch concealed within the room provided a means to return to the map, leaving me with a lingering anticipation for the adventures that awaited beyond. Halfway Park, a world brimming with whimsy and unexpected expected avenues of respite, demonstrated the imaginative tapestry woven by the Bone Lab team. Amidst the pursuit of their creative endeavors, they found solace in unorthodox methods, each contributing their unique perspective to the ever-evolving realm of Boneworks. Eager to unravel further mysteries and uncover the stories yet untold, I pressed forward, driven by curiosity and a deep appreciation for the craftsmanships of the game's creators. Museum Basement, a beloved classic map from Boneworks, beckoned me with its allure. Although tasked with retrieving a battery from the tower, I opted for a more expedited approach, effortlessly soaring through the air with the Nimbus gun. As I entered the expansive space, a sense of mystery permeated the surrounding, enticing me to explore the depths of the museum. Amidst the labyrinth of corridors, projectors looms, their presence serving as a constant reminder of the challenges that lay ahead. Their resilience posed a formidable obstacle, demanding my attention and skill to overcome. It was during my search for the elusive developer keycard that I chanced upon a clipboard, offering a glimpse into the inner workings of the Boneworks team. Undeterred by the darkness that enshrouded the lower depths, I persisted in my quest, eventually illuminating the abyss to reveal the keycard belonging to Steve G, known as Steven, the esteemed producer of the game. With the keycard in hand, I proceeded to unlock the entrance to the staff-only room eager to uncover its secrets. Within the confines of this exclusive sanctuary, a poster ominously proclaimed our surveillance, hinting at pervasive watchfulness that pervaded the museum. A subtle reference to the Museum of Technical Demonstration further piqued my curiosity, urging me to delve deeper into the enigmatic realm of Boneworks. The room itself, resembling an office space, has the desk adorned with a computer serving as a nexus of administrative operations. As I absorbed the ambience of the staff-only room, a sense of anticipation well
welled within me. The museum basements teeming with untold stories of hidden truths offered a tantalizing glimpse into the intricate tapestry woven by the Boneworks team. With a spectre of constant observation and the allure of the Museum of Technical Demonstrations beckoning me forward, I resolved to uncover the depths of this enigmatic world eager to unravel the mysteries that lay in wait. Museum basement is a testament to the meticulous craftsmanship and boundless imagination of the Bone Lab team, would undoubtedly leave their inevitable mark on the annals of gaming history. Neon District Parkour is a visually captivating map, adorned with vibrant colours beckoned me with its alluring charm. The neon lights dance in mesmerizing patterns, casting a vibrant glow on the surroundings. As I ventured forth, the dev card belonging to Kevin W, also known as Mallet, senior engineer of Bone Lab, greeted me on top of a ledge near the spawn point. Navigating through the parkour-laden landscape, I effortlessly maneuvered through the intricate obstacles. The path to a secret door presented itself with ease. Upon scanning the key card, I gained access to a small room that held little in its confines. The room was adorned with lockers and unlockables, hinting at hidden treasure waiting to be discovered. Within this unassuming space, I stumbled upon a clipboard that revealed glimpses of the Boneworks team meticulous work. It spoke of Saber Lake's firearms, renowned for their astonishing rate of fire. The clipboard hinted at the ongoing progress in the weapons lab, as they sought to push the boundaries of physics through adjustments and modifications. The tantalizing potential of these experimental firearms filled the air with excitement, while also raising questions about the validity of data collection given the unconventional variables they introduced. While the room itself appears modest, its contents held the potential for groundbreaking discoveries. As I absorbed the information before me, I marveled at the dedication and innovation of the Boneworks team. The implications of Saber Lake's weapons and the ongoing evaluation of their testing methodologies lingered in my mind, sparking curiosity about the untapped potential lying beyond reach. In the realm of Neon District Parkour, where agility and precision were paramount, the glimpses into the team's development process served as a reminder of the meticulous craftsmanship that lay behind the intricate level and exhilarating gameplay experience. With the knowledge gained from the humble room and the desire for further exploration, I pressed on, ready to conquer the challenges that awaited me in the neon-lit playground of the creativity and innovation. Rooftops is a level that effortlessly evoked the spirit of iconic movies like Terminator and Blade Runner captured my imagination with its futuristic ambience. As I ascended the stairs and reached the pinnacle of the rooftops, a sense of awe washed over me. It was as if I stepped into a realm where these beloved cinematic worlds converged. Amidst the urban landscape, top of building, I discovered the dev keycard belonging to Spencer A, also known as James389, the talented digital artist of Bone Lab. Eager to explore further, I swiftly traversed the map, my Nimbus gun propelling me through the air with grace. To my delight, a secret room revealed itself on the side of the building, concealed behind a breakable glass. Curiosity peaked. I made my way inside as the doors closed behind me, I I found myself in what appeared to be the laboratory, a conspicuous setting hiding the true secrets within. Undeterred by the mundane surroundings, I spotted a door adorned with a card reading. Placing Spencer A's keycard into the slot, the door opened, granting me access to a spacious living room. Though sparsely furnished, the room held particular allure, with random items scattered about, boxes, shelves, and the remnants of a forgotten past. It was in this room that I discovered the notepad, waiting to unveil its secrets. The notepad labeled Secure Board. Within its pages, the author ponders the disconcerting phenomenon deja vu. The architecture of these virtual worlds seemed hauntingly familiar, as if drawn from our collective memories or perhaps even our dreams. The notion of the design AI tapping into the depths of our consciousness raised questions about the invasive nature of the immersive realm. Contemplating the security implications, the author expressed with a desire to consult the Boneworks team and uncover their thoughts on this perplexing revelation. Exploring further, I discovered two additional rooms, one which served as an office space. While they had no immediate revelations, the mere presence of these rooms hinted at the intricate web of creation and collaboration that helped the Boneworks universe. Every nook and cranny held the potential for discovery, offering a glimpse into the meticulous craftsmanship and attention to detail that went throughout each level. In the realm of rooftops, where the neon glow illuminated the night sky, I marveled at the convergence of cinematic influences and the surreal mysteries that awaited within. With the notepad's words lingering in my mind, I ventured forth, propelled by a thirst for knowledge and a desire to uncover the secrets that lay hidden beneath the surface of this virtual world. Tuscany, an original Boneworks map that begins its journey as the Oculus DK1 demo in Unity, held a special place in the hearts of players. Flying away from the quaint house, I set my sights on a statue perched on top of a structure. Upon reaching its summit, I discovered a dev card belonging to Kevin C, the technical director for Bone Lab, whose expertise had shaped the very foundation of the game. Venturing further, I soared over the ocean, traversed the expansive map until I reached a hidden platform on the door, a subtle nod to the iconic film The Truman Show. Placing the keycard in its rightful spot, the door swung open, revealing an airlock Lock. Engaging the button, the airlock cycled, paving the way for my ascent. Though a towering elevator beckoned, my Nimbus gun provided a swifter method of transport. Ascending to the pinnacle, I found myself in a long corridor, leading to an observation deck that offered breathtaking views of Tuscany. Two chairs and a small table awaited, providing a serene space to appreciate the scenic beauty. On the table, I discovered a notepad labelled Secure Board, a window into the musings of the Boneworks team. 
The notepad delved into the topic of old myths, evoking a sense of nostalgia for the early days of AI experimentation. The author pondered the significance of the terms such as age of measurement of physical distance and void-based molecular composition. These enigmatic phrases hinted at the depths within the Boneworks universe, suggesting a deeper understanding of the virtual realms and their intricate mechanisms. As the iterations of progress and their tendrils of creation reached further, the space became more abstracted, evoking an unfinished, liminal ambience teeming with danger and fragility. Returning to the elevator summit, I retrieved a battery, a crucial component that would grant me access to yet another secret door. As I stepped through, an intriguing sight awaited me, a peculiar contraption that amounted void energy, accompanied by the presence of a black hole. The cylindrical chamber spilled in otherworldly essence onto the floor, creating an awe-inspiring and slightly unavailing spectacle. Adjacent to this marvel, a lab contained gas cans hinted at the experimentation and exploration that thrived within the world of Boneworks. Immersed in the mysteries of Tuscany, I marveled at the seamless blend of reality and digital artistry. From the tranquil observation deck to the enigmatic depths of the secret room, every corner of this map spoke of the team's dedication to crafting a rich and captivating experience. With each experience, the boundaries of imagination expanded, leaving me eager to uncover more secrets that delve deeper into the intriguing tapestry of Boneworks. Mirror introduced a fascinating experimental map that piqued my curiosity. As I took flight and reached the pinnacle, a keycard awaited me, strategically placed next to a concrete crouch adorned with a perplexed optical illusion ball. This keycard belonging to Nate E, the lead artist and avid gamer known as Dumbana. Excitement surged through me as I descended back to the spawn point, located the keycard port, and inserted the keycard, unlocking a concealed staircase. Descending the stairs, an eerie ambience enveloped the surroundings, accompanied by a disconcerting sound reminiscent of vast emptiness. One portion of the cave appeared to have collapsed in, leaving me no choice but to venture in the opposite direction. The path led to what initially seemed like a dead end, yet driven by curiosity, I unleashed my destructive prowess upon a box, revealing a hidden passage. Crawling through the narrow corridor, I emerged into a vibrant room adorned with lush greenery, pots and flowers. The atmosphere exuded a sense of tranquility and natural beauty. Within this verdant sanctuary, I stumbled upon a notepad that held valuable insights into the creative minds behind Boneworks. Nate, in his musing, shared his research and fascination with void mirrors. The first notepad entry revealed his initial skepticism about the mesmerizing allure attributed to mirrors, but acknowledged their calming effect. Intrigued by their potential, Nate decided to set an advanced work lab nearby to explore the magical properties further. The second notepad entry delved deeper into Nate's understanding of the void mirrors. He recognized that the reflections of them were a manifestation of a swarm of void particles, mimicking the shapes they reflected. Nate also confessed to a feeling of profound connection to these manifestations, as they were attempting to delve into the depths of his very being. However, he acknowledges the need for further research before delving into such profound claims. Immersed in the enigmatic depths of mirrors, I marveled at the interplay between illusions and reality, as well as the team's dedication to pushing the boundaries of perceptions. The exploration of the void mirrors added a layer of mystery and introspection into the map, drawing me further into the captivating world of Boneworks. Each step brought me new revelations and contemplation, solidifying my appreciation of the artistry and innovation of the Boneworks team. Thanks for joining me on this exploration of secret rooms. While I don't have any Patreons to acknowledge, I want to express my gratitude to each and every one of you who watched, liked, and commented on my content. I would also like to extend a special thanks to the members of my Discord server who helped me find the rooms. Your support and engagement are truly appreciated. Once again, I'm grateful for your presence on this journey. Happy exploring.